Set six will be played on Whirlwind. Spawning in the bottom left-hand position is the Green Protoss from STX Soul. The last chance for them in this tournament before losing a match. It's Trap. His opponent spawns in the bottom right position as Red Protoss, playing for SK Telecom T1. His name is Bisu. Indeed. Bisu not having the best record here in PvP. Showing some improvements, showing that he can do the macro game, but definitely showing a lot of weakness earlier on in PvP. You know, Bisu did say hard of the swarm system a lot better because he, there's a lot more options for Protoss players to defend against the early timing pushes from their opponent. And we've seen this from PBC and PBT matches from Bisu. But when it comes to PvP, you still need to have a fantastic micro and have the units in pot position to defend against the early pressure from their opponent. Yeah, and I'm Ooh. also... Ooh, hold on a second. Well, you know, this is kind of what I was talking about, going for something to try to take out your opponent early on. This is exactly what Trap knows. He's studied this build, and he's going to get the early gateway. He could go for early Void Ray play. We've been seeing that a little bit, uh, you know, in various matchups from the Protoss side. He's getting the early gas as well. It leads me to think that we will be seeing a uh, very early Stargate from him. Yeah, well, let's see how Trap is going to play this out just yet. And look at Bisu. Uh -oh. Is he actually going to... Yeah, oh, he's going to do it. Oh, my God. He's going to go for the Nexus, and Trap is going for the 10 gateway. Oh, gosh. This could not get any worse for Bisu, actually. I think this may just end up being a build order loss. And the early Nexus... There goes Nexus first from Bisu. This is something that... You need, you need balls of steel to pull this off in PvP. And I'd say that yeah, even a fast zealot on the way for Trap as well. He could just be going for early pressure here. You know, it doesn't even need the, the go for a star. He is going to scout his opponent last, though, uh, from the look of things. So that's going to help out Beast a little bit here, but I'm just I'm not sure if this is going to end up working out for our SK Telecom Protoss player. Well, the problem is this was catered against the regular 13 gateway build from his opponent as he was expecting, you know, the regular opening and Beast is telling himself, you know what, if I just have the build order against my opponent to defend against the 13 gateway, then I'm going to be completely fine. I'm going to have the Nexus up. I'm going to have the Mother Support out for the Nexus Cannon at the Natural. And I'm going to defend against my opponent's early pressure. The problem is the pressure is going to hit around 2 minutes sooner than Bisu expects it to be. And the problem is Bisu is going to end up scouting his opponent last. Oh, unfortunately, he's going to go over to the top left, and he's going to see the Zealot early on here, getting a Cybernetic Scorn second gateway. Warp Gate is being chronoed out right now as well. We don't have any probes in production, and only a single we geyser. A, we might even see a four gate from our Protoss player, uh, trap right now, if he scouts the natural nexus, he knows that he can't finish the game once he realizes that Beast took a really greedy expansion over there. Now the Zealot's not going to pressure. He doesn't know about this expansion yet. He's going to find out pretty soon, this pro. Mm -hmm. And the other problem is once, uh, if the Zealot is not shown early, Bisu, he might think that he's in a fantastic position right now with the probe scouting his opponent last. So here comes the Zealot, here comes the Stalker, here comes the probe! All right, we have a Mother Ship Core in production for Bisu, but here he is, he's going to see those units. Bisu, uh, the pylon going down as well. This is going to be a lot of pressure, almost impossible to hold uh, from uh, the SK Telecom player's side here. He's going to also need to build another pylon as well, chronoing out some units as well, but the Mother Ship Core only has 56 energy. It's going to be a long time before enough units come out for Bisu to defend against this pressure here. And with Warp Gate completing, we're going to be able to see three units at a time get warped in from Trap. He has two Proxy pylons in Bisu's main base now warping in three stalkers. Bisu has two stalkers here that have completed here. He maybe with some good control or an Asurani can make a miracle happen, but I'm just not sure if he's got enough in this position. Already losing a good amount of workers as well. He's kept his stalkers alive, but oh, oh, the Mother Ship Core is uh, gonna fall. And we do have a time warp, but that's not gonna be too useful in this position. Bisu is just unfortunate for him. The build was very risky and He's gonna, it looks like he's gonna pay for it now. Additional stock is warping in. It's just the law of numbers. There's simply too many units for Trap, and he's gonna micro against his opponent here, regardless of the time warp. Bisu, he's gonna lose everything already down to seven workers. Even if this attack was somehow held off, there's nothing left for Bisu. He's gonna be forced to tap out. GG is called. Bisu falls in the sixth set. We will be moving into an ace set. Trap. He is really happy with his build order. He's really happy that the build order worked out against his opponent, Bisu. Bisu feeling a little bit sad, but it's only a build order loss for this guy as, you know, the map was perfect to go for the Nexus first. The problem is 
trap, took that to his advantage, went for a really fast gateway into really fast three ward gate pressure, and it worked out perfectly against Bisu. Oh, so, yeah, that this is kind of the sad story of Bisu in PvP in StarCraft 2. You know, it's not that he's like just playing really bad, it's just that a lot of times he ends up just having build order losses, and that's hurt him a lot in the past here. Uh, we've seen just a little, little slip-ups from him, and that have, have caused him to lose a lot of the matches here, so... Uh, we're going to find out momentarily who the ace player for each team is going to be as they send them out. Well, last time when STXO and SK Telecom T1 met in the playoffs, they dragged it into the ace match two times in a row. And SK Telecom T1 did win both of them. But here's a problem for SK Telecom T1. Back then, they didn't have a high caliber play player like Innovation in the team. Uh, that's true. Innovation is going to be the obstacle that SK Telecom must uh, overcome twice now. We could see what a lot of people want to see, which is the Rain Innovation Ace match. That is probably what a lot of people are expecting here. And there could be a lot of mind games that go into play that would prevent one or both players from coming out. But those are the obvious choices for each team. The map in for the Ace match is going to be Newkirk Redevelopment Precinct, which means that Innovation, Terran player on Newkirk, he's going to be feeling fantastic going into the Ace set. Yeah, that's true. Uh, New Kirk, we've seen pretty much every race fielded on this map in general. Overall, decently balanced. And as we return to the OGN studio, it's now time to find out who's going to be sent out for the ace match between STX Soul and their opponents, SK Telecom T1. Innovation at the end of the bench there on the right. <laughs> Trying. There's a wave starting from the end to the front. Is it going to be one of the two Protoss players at the end, or no? We're going to move down the aisle as we go towards the end, and Innovation, is it going to be him? Yes, it is. Of course it is. He's the sure bet for STXL if there's any, even though he lost his first match against Best. I'm pretty sure that's not going to affect him much mentally, if at all. You know, simply uh, getting behind early on from the build order loss, not the end of the world. So it's time to find out who his opponent's going to be. Will it be Rain? That's what I'm putting my money on. We could see potentially maybe even Fantasy come out as well. It really comes down to SK Telecom. What do they have in store for their opponents, STX Soul? Yeah, well, let's go back to the SK Telecom T1's bench. We have the Protoss players. We have few Zerg players and Terran players. We see Rain near the end. We see Fantasy sitting in the middle. But it seems like Rain, he's saying, you know what? I think it's time for me to head out and play in the ace match. But is it going to be Rain or is it going to be Fantasy? Seems like Fantasy is walking out and he is going to be the ace player for SK Telecom T1. Fantasy, always reliable when it comes to the playoffs. And I can guarantee you that he's got something in store for his opponent innovation. An ace card up his sleeve. He will be your ace player from SK Telecom T1. Going to bow to the audience, shake hands most likely with Innovation as well. And they'll go to their booths and prepare for the ace set here. Innovation probably is expecting a Protoss player, but indeed, it's not going to be that. It's going to be Fantasy, the Terran ace from SK Telecom T1. So we'll have that ace match for you guys after this commercial break. 